Mike's, uh, Mike, uh, first, congratulations on the addition of the under Cadiz to team. Uh, how did you go about the identifying the player? You know, Gary and I uh, work closely with our scouting department, led by Chance Myers, and our analytics department, led by uh, Oliver Miller Farrell, at trying to take the positional profiles that maybe Gary looks for as far as a certain qualities in a striker, technically, tactically, physically, and psychologically, and then try to like have a targeted approach, try to find the best players that we think fit that profile. And there's a number of things we might look for as, as we start a process like that. And you know, it could be the league, the leagues they play in. Do they translate to our league? Uh, the language they speak. Would they be able to kind of assimilate to our culture in our country uh, and in our city? Uh, playing with their teammates. Uh, you know, the qualities they have as a person as well as a player. You know, a number of different attributes. And you know, over the last year, obviously, the you know the nine position is is as important as you have in any team. When you look at the uh, the role that player can have in changing the fate uh, or the future of a team. Uh, you know, we were really excited not only to identify a player that we thought we could attain, that we, that we could be able to, uh, to attract to come to Nashville and sign, but to be able to do so uh, for someone that we thought could hit all the qualities we were looking for in a player in that role. Uh, the fact that he came from a country that's translated really well in our league of players who've come in from Venezuela but also that he's played in some very strong leagues, you know, in some of the best leagues and countries in the world, you know, most recently in Liga in France, but as well as in Portugal and, and in Venezuela. Uh, you know, we really felt really excited about the fact that we got someone that we felt fit all of our needs we're looking for in that role. And the reality is, uh, you know, when you think about trying to mitigate risk uh, in any deal, the idea of being able to acquire a player on a one-year loan first gives us the best opportunity to not only uh, assess his talents, but to be able to explore the potential of having Gary and his staff work with him for a year, uh, you know, before we have to commit to, to sign that player long-term, although we are able to sign that player at any point during the course of his loan period. So we're really excited to be able to add yonder. We think he fits perfectly in what we were looking for. Uh, it does feel a little bit kind of like, uh, like Christmas morning, you know, where you wake up and you run down the steps to see what's under the Christmas tree. You know, I think to have that, our present be yonder, we're really excited about that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, you mentioned some of the, some of the uh, qualities that you're looking to uh, in order to add him into a team. How does, uh, in, your, in your mind, Gary, how does he fit within your game plan? Well, first and foremost, to echo a couple of points that, that Mike has touched on there, you know, this, this is a, a process that takes some time. It's, it's not a decision that's made overnight and uh, that, that we've, we've jumped on quickly and not explored very deeply. You know, we've seen an awful lot of footage of this player. We've, we've had contact with this player. We've looked into the background of this player. And, you know, Yonder ticks a lot of boxes. So as far as fitting into the group, you know, Yonder's a... a, a athletic player he's a technically gifted player um to mike's point he's played at a very good level and he's i think we all believe he's at a point where he's still got a tremendous amount to prove and and he's i think coming at a, a point in his career where you know we have a, a a wonderful opportunity here with a top class player um at the moment we're playing with a lone striker that he's used to um, will that change in the future? Of course it can. And he's very capable of, of playing in a pair. But I think as you see our team evolve, you know, Yonder encapsulates an awful lot of what we're about at the moment. And that's a team that, um, you know, has a, a very positive approach, whether that's with the ball or without it. Um, we're slowly but surely uh, coping with some of the difficulties of MLS and managing the game in a much better technical fashion. Um, and he's also a very, very genuine individual. When we look back at some of his footage, he shows, you know, a very good team ethic that of course, again, ticks a box with the group that we have. So listen, I'm excited. Um, I'm sure when we get him on the ground, it will be, uh, you know, even more exciting to have him around the group. And I've absolutely no doubt, having spoken to the player, 
that he'll fit in with the group tremendously well. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we will now open the, the floor for questions, and uh, I will ask the, the media that limit their questions to uh, John Del Cadet at the moment, and then we'll follow up with questions for uh, the Atlanta United game uh, after that. So uh, with that, we will have our first question coming from uh, Dre Hills with the Tennessee and for you, Mike. All right, good afternoon. It's been a while. I trust you're well. Uh, absolutely. When it comes to Yonder's experience uh, in Portugal, it's been a few years since he since he first arrived and obviously playing last year um, in the French League, you talked about especially how the Portuguese style, I guess that league, how it translates into MLS. When watching that film, did you see something fresh from Yonder that maybe the guys that you've acquired already maybe don't necessarily have per se, or is he more of an addition to what you guys are already trying to build that made you really think that, okay, he's definitely an MLS player? Well, you know, first I would say, rather than compare him to, to what we do or don't have in our current team, you know, I'd rather focus on what his qualities are. And, you know, the reality is, you know, you've seen this year firsthand, you've had players who have come from Denmark, uh, originally German born, who have come from Costa Rica, having played in Belgium, uh, you know, players from different countries who have come right into MLS. And obviously there's an adaptation period. It takes time to get used to not only a, a new league and new teammates, but even a new culture. You know, I mean, you know, Hani Mukhtar mentioned the other day, he's never been asked to play in temperatures like this before. You know, so it's just very different. And, you know, I think for us, we're honest to this adaptation and acclimation that, that players will have when they arrive. And it obviously takes time. And you know, obviously this 2020 season is kind of a truncated season as far as what it represents right now. But for someone like Yonder to be able to come in and, and have these months here kind of leading up to the 21 season to help them get settled in is really, really important. And, you know, I think that sometimes players are coming in the summer window, it takes a little bit of an adjustment. And, you know, we just finished playing twice against Orlando City. And, you know, one of their key players, uh, Uri Rossell, uh, is, is, uh, you know, came from – from, uh, from La Maeza uh, in Barcelona in Spain. And he came to Kansas City in, two, in 2012 in, in the summer window. And when he first came, you know, he was a shadow of the player. He ended up being in 2013. You know, I think it took him some time to settle in. And, you know, after that adaptation period kind of wore off, you know, he became this key guy for a really good team that won the MLS Cup. And he's obviously done well for Orlando City now. And, you know, everyone is different as far as how long it takes to acclimate and adapt. I think for us, someone like Yonder, because he comes from – uh, a South American country that might have a similar climate and similar culture to our country. The fact that he's played in, in leagues in Portugal and in France, where you also seen players come in here and, and do well at uh, transitioning to the league. We think it'll help as far as aiding in his uh, adaptation. As far as the things that he provides the player, you know, if you ask Gary, like physically, if he wanted somebody who was, who was tall and good in the air or like really fast, he'd probably respond. Yes. You know, he wants all those things. You know, uh, you know, for us to have someone like Yonder who has, you know, this, these unique athletic attributes that he is strong, you know, physically good in the air, but he also has like this breakneck pace that makes him like really dangerous to threaten to get in behind. He really is kind of like, like this, the best of both worlds as far as we are looking for out of a target player. And, you know, I, I think for us, very rarely to find players like that who are attainable, they actually can get uh, even more so players in their prime. You know, I, I think you look at players who've come into our league in MLS 3.0, the league's constantly evolving, you know, and the idea of bringing, you know, 35 plus year old players based on things that they have done in the past. You know, for us, we try to pride ourselves in finding players in their prime and identifying players and really trying to bring them here based on what we think they're going to do. You know, so we really kind of thought that he represented a lot of things that, that we're looking for in our team and really fit what Gary wants to do on the field. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we will go on with a question from Tom Boger uh, for an MLSsoccer.com for you, uh, Coach, and then uh, a follow-up question for you, Mike. Hey, guys. Uh, nice to speak with you again. Uh, congrats on, on the Yonder deal. Um, I guess I'm, I'm going to start with, with Mike first. Um, to, I guess simplistic, you know, why now? Why, why was Yonder the right guy after your extensive scouting, and, and why pull the trigger on this deal now, um, you know, in this summer window rather than you know, either waiting until the winter or, or whatever, you know. Well, hey, Tom, it's a great question as well. And, you know, look, I mean, obviously the 2020 season has changed an awful lot. You know, you think, uh, obviously, we've been through as much as any team in the league when you think of 
what we've had to endure between the hurricanes and what happened in Orlando and, you know, rain delays. I mean, we've kind of seen and done everything at this point. I mean, it's like a joke with Gary, you know, when something comes up like this, it's just another day for Nashville SC in 2020. You know, we're just going to expect this now. And, you know, uh, we're conventional thinking as you move along in 2020 might think maybe you kind of punt to the winter window 21. I think for us, when the opportunity to go after a player that, that we clearly became kind of our top choice became available for us now, the summer window, we could only have gotten yonder if we did this deal now, you know, and that's why we kind of agreed to do it you know, in this window, but like as a loan, you know, for this first year, because it gave us an opportunity to, to add him now, you know, uh, take a look at him. But, you know, the reality is, I mean, if, if, if we had waited until December, or January, a player of Yonder's abilities wasn't going to be available. You know, he, he was such high demand. We weren't going to, they weren't going to wait around for us three months to do a deal like this. And, and Gary, just kind of more so on the field, you know, you've already talked a little bit about how he's going to fit in with your tactics and whatnot. But I guess, you know, specifically, how, how do you envision him, you know, helping lift the performance performances of some of the other players in attack, like, like Hani and Randall and David and, you know, all the other attackers that you guys have? Well, as, as you find in most positions on the field, when you've got massive competition or, or, you know, very good competition, then you get the best out of players. And it's certainly no different in the front line. It's easy for everyone to see that, you know, we've fallen short in front of goal. We've created chances, but we've found life difficult to convert. And, you know, bringing in a, a player of, of Yonder's ability certainly, you know, adds to, hopefully, the expectation of, of scoring goals. Now, it doesn't automatically come along that an individual from abroad who's played at a very good level you know, scores 15, 20 goals. To Mike's point, it can take some time to adapt. But what we do know is, you know, it's an area of the field that is is vitally important to every team and, and we're no different. And, you know, we've now added an individual who I firmly believe is going to be very effective in this, uh, in this league. So, again, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. As soon as Yonder's here... Um, and he's able to to get working and and to get moving again. Um, you know, we we find ourselves with a body that I'm sure will lift not only uh, the expectations of the front line, but you know, there'll be there'll be a, a nice shot in the arm for everyone in the group. Question now from uh, Ben Wright uh, from Speedway Soccer for both of you as well. Yeah, good to talk to you guys. Um, first question is for Mike. Um, with the deal lasting through June of 2021, how important was it to to get him in what's hopefully going to be a more regular season next year and to be able to see him in what's more of a traditional MLS environment instead of this season, which is obviously different than normal? Hey, Ben, it's a great question. You know, uh, look, we, we talked a lot when, when this season first started about getting a chance to see the current group of guys we had and be able to evaluate them. You know, uh, you know, the reality is that, you know, whatever season that Yonder joins when he gets here, it's going to be like no other season our league has seen. You know, uh, you know I, I joke about like, this Ironman football that, that Gary and his, his guys have been asked to do. You know, it, it resembles an awful lot of what, you know, those of you who were here during USL days remember seeing, where, you know, two games in a week. I mean, we just finished five games in 15 days. You know, it doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. And it doesn't happen under these kind of weather conditions that you see, you know, in, in our country. I mean, God, you know, we, we arrived in Dallas – uh, for our first match, we got the plane that the temperature was 102 degrees. You know, like it, you know, to imagine having to play in those kind of demands and flying down and back in the day, it's, it's pretty adverse. So I, I think we're going to learn a lot about Yonder the same way we learned about the other guys we have here. But to your point, Ben, I mean, I, I think it will be important to, to see him, I think, in a proper preseason. Uh, you know, like Gary is, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think he's a tactician, but he's also like a really good coach on the field. And I think having Yonder here for matches will be important. But having him get a chance to integrate in our group this season, but then be here for a full preseason in January is going to be really, really important. I think you're going to see, just as you've seen from guys like Honey and Randall in their first year, you're going to see, you know, flash of what, of what Yonder's capable of when he arrives. But I, I think, you know, uh, it's, it's a good question because you're probably going to, going to learn a lot more from as we head into 21. And Gary, for you, just what, um, what are you expecting from him in terms of, 
arriving the quarantine period, obviously adapting to a new team after not having played competitively for a while. How, how do you, how long do you think it'll be before he's adapted and, and ready to play? Well, I, I think we have to assess that when he gets here. Um, we have a, a plan of action for the player to, to work out exactly physically where he's at. Um, from my standpoint, Yes, I want him involved and putting pressure on that front line and competing for a spot as quickly as possible. But I think we also have to be sensible um, and, and make sure that he's in the right physical place. Um, we've seen multiple players uh, around the league. The, the most recent one, of course, is Matuidi down in, in Miami, who, you know, they're coming from a, a different schedule and a different rhythm in Europe, and it'll be no different. So we'll, we'll make sure that he's in the right place and we'll get him in the, in the 18, 20 as quickly as we possibly can. But I want to make sure, of course, he's in the right place. In terms of, in terms of you know, how that will affect the group, I mean, I, I genuinely hope that, you know, he hits the ground running, um, he, he, he mixes and, and uh, you know, creates a good relationship immediately with the players that we've got in the group. And I, and I do think one of the, the real upsides, whilst there's many to our group, is that we have a fabulous group of players. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't meet a more genuine bunch. And I think that in itself makes transition and, um, you know, the, the acclimation that much easier. Um, beautiful city. You can't go wrong. I'm sure he's going to love it. Thank you. We will continue with questions for both of you uh, from Team Sullivan. Um, I guess I'll start with you, Mike. Uh, you mentioned some of the advantages of bringing him in on a loan with the option to purchase. Uh, were you guys specifically looking for a loan um, for whomever it was that you guys ended up signing, or was that something that worked best for this specific player? Tim, it's a great question. And, you know, what, what I would tell you is, uh, I mentioned before, Thank but I, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> Mentioned before about the idea about like mitigating risk. Uh, look, it, it, the reality is in a perfect world. I mean, uh, you know, any any club doing business like this prefers doing a loan with the option of purchase with a pre-range purchase price. You know, uh, you know, there are some deals you do a loan and it's not a pre-range purchase price. So the player comes and he kills it, and now the club asks for more than they would have asked a month a year ago. You know, so you know the reality is not not every deal works that way. You know, so I think we're very fortunate that you know we're. You know, we, we couldn't have drawn it up in the sand and said this, we were hoping, you know, hoping it was going to happen. But, you know, the reality is, I mean, you know, gun to my head, I mean, you'd always want to deal life when we got. And, you know, Benfica was, has been a really good partner for us as far as being willing, willing to work with us in this capacity. And Gary, you've made no secret that goal scoring has been one of the, uh, the struggles for your team, obviously, this year. And particularly in terms of finishing, what have you seen from, from the player in that regard to uh, hopefully – help fix some of those issues well he's he's uh his style of play and some of the some of the qualities that that yonder has i think for all of us um represent a, a, a not just a good focal point but somebody that certainly has the ability in mls and in the team he's coming into to, to make a difference. I mean, it goes without saying, otherwise we wouldn't have been so keen to sign the player. Um, you know, confidence is a huge issue. You, you need a player coming in who's in the right place. And, and we believe he is. You know, you can, you can look at all of the aspects of his, whether it's his world as a person or a player, that, you know, really put him in a good place. He's, he's in the peak of his, in the prime of his career or coming into it. He's, he's had a terrific move to a top club in Europe. Um, he's a sought after individual. Um, and then of course you can look at the practicalities of the player. So I, I can't tell you that, you know, he'll score 20 goals for us. I can tell you, I hope he does. And with the opportunities I believe the group are making, of course, I believe he'll make a difference. But just as importantly, uh, I think he'll bring more out of the individuals in the team. And I think he'll raise the bar and really the expectation 
of our group internally. And at the moment, yes, it has been a problem. And, uh, you know, I still believe that one or two of the guys that we have are going to break out of this funk that they're in. And, you know, you, you see it multiple times where forwards out of the blue, you know, will score a brace, want to let them up the backside and ricochet in without them really knowing. And, and before you know it, they're, they're on a different track. And, and that's how forwards work. They have to work hard at getting it right, which they are doing daily. But at the moment, it's not going, it's not going for them. You know, we've looked back at some of the opportunities in Miami. And for the large part, you'd have to say that guys like Dominic Badgie and, 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 and Hani Mukhtar uh, should be converting opportunities and chances that are presented to them. And, and I do believe, as I've said, that that will come good. But the addition of a player like this um, I think it helps everyone. It helps the team. Um, it, it certainly helps that front line. And I'm hoping it will give the fans and everyone that's uh, cheering for us a bit of a boost as well. Thank you, Coach. We have, we have one more question on this topic uh, before moving into uh, our match against Atlanta United. And uh, that will come from Jen Triestas with the Tennessee and for you, Mike. Yeah, Mike, kind of following up on what, what Gary was saying there, uh, you know, how much, I mean, you mentioned you, to, to get the player, you, you probably needed to, to do it now, but how much of a sense of urgency has there been for you to address this position, just given how, how the season's gone so far and that, you know, there's been a lot of good things in terms of, uh, you know, possession and defense, but not so much scoring. It seems like you're, you're scratching the edge here. Yeah, look, honestly, at Gentry, you know, the reality is that I, I think for Gary and I to do our jobs really well, you know, we can't live in a world where it gets panicky on a game-to-game basis. You know, uh, for us, I'm really proud of the fact that we've kind of stuck to our guns as far as our plans, maintain the integrity of what we want to do, like with our roster build, and felt good about the fact that, obviously, you know, the sunny yonder comes at the right time, but, you know, it also kind of comes – you know, not just about what our team maybe needs in the field today, but in kind of where we saw this all kind of building out. And, you know, like I've talked a lot about the fact that, you know, how most expansion teams struggle so badly defensively. You know, and the reality is in, in the history of our league, you know, only Seattle has conceded less goals in their first season through nine games. You know, so, I mean, you know, we've done kind of what we need to do defensively. And, you know, as Gary mentioned before about creating chances, I mean, look, you know, you know, uh, a lot of times I, I was kind of thought that, it's, you know, it's harder to create chances than it, is, than it is to finish them, you know, and, you know, the more chance you create, you know, the, you know, the, the law of averages, you know, the more goals you're going to score and where it hasn't happened for us yet. I mean, look, we're, we're 11th in the league in chances created. I mean, look at things like uh, XG4 minus like XG against, you know, in some ways, right? Like we're, we're not, not, we are the second most unlucky team in MLS. And you think of the chance we've created, like good chances and haven't finished. And to Gary's point, I think at some point, you know, some of those are going to turn around for some of these guys these chances that we create, we're going to execute and finish. And I think adding someone like Yonder only increases our odds to be able to do that. And when you see what's happened defensively, you know, in our first season, I think about getting those pieces right and us being so close to doing that. You know, I, I think we're on the verge of having some big things ahead here for this group. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for the first time in quite a while, uh, Coach, you have had the opportunity to prepare for a, for a match uh, with a, an entire week uh, for you. How are you, how are you, how have you used this uh, week to prepare for, to face Atlanta United? Well, after such a, a tough run, you know, a big piece of the equation was making sure that the guys were physically and, and emotionally refreshed. So they've had a couple of days off um, in that period of time. You know, they've, they've been in to make sure that their recovery work at the training ground um, and, and certainly some of the, the players on the fringes have had some extra work. But, you know, we've, we've for the first time today, got back together again and looked at some um, aspects of our game that will be important towards the weekend. And, you know, this is, a as Mike's touched on, this is a unique season with so many games coming so quickly. Um, you know, I do believe that the time we've had here has been uh, has been utilised well, and for those guys being physically ready for the weekend, 
was was one of the big boxes that I wanted to tick. You know, Atlanta are coming off of um, you know a, a tough week themselves, three away games. Um, you know, this obviously being their third, and I, I, I felt honestly that you know being fresh, being bright, and, and purposeful at the weekend is as big a quality as any to try and get ourselves in the uh, in the positive column at the weekend. Thank you, Coach. We will go on with a question from Tim Sullivan uh, around around this topic. If you, before we jump on uh, on having Tim ask this question, please a reminder: if you have if you have questions in regard to this topic, uh, alert me through the chat. Thank you, Tim. Gary, not only having a week or a bit, almost a week leading up to the game, but also um, knowing that this is the last game that you that you know what the schedule is going to be for a long time. Do, do you kind of go all out and say everything we have goes towards Atlanta? Or do you kind of hold some stuff in the tank a little bit, knowing that uh, the season isn't going to be over, even if the schedule isn't set yet after this? Well, what we know is, Tim, that, that you know, there's due to be a, a second phase of the schedule. So, um, you know, we, we, we're assured, as assured as you can be, I guess, this year. <laughs> Nothing straightforward, but... Um, you know, there's going to be some some more fixtures. I, I think to your point, you know, Atlanta are a team that even in the early stages of our history have, have been a, 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 the best way of putting it, you know, a, a bogey team, a thorn in our side, a, a difficulty, however you want to put it. They're a team that, you know, we have a... a, a distinct rivalry with because of the location and yet at this precise moment as you might have expected they've they've got themselves in a in a good spot in in that relationship and and make no mistake I'm very very keen to start getting this back on track against Atlanta and Saturday's as good a day as any um you know at home again uh, we've had our two most recent games um, in, in Titan Stadium, I felt as though the performances in, in a very strange environment, of course, warranted and looked like good home performances and that the guys look comfortable and express themselves well. And I would, I would hope that Saturday's game won't be any different. You add into that that um, Atlanta have had a midweek game and we haven't and we've been in that position numerous times it's not easy especially when you're jumping on a flight and you're playing a game in the same day we, we know what that's like so there's a lot of things that we've got to overcome ourselves you know whilst they're um, going through a, what seem, would seem to be a bit of a, a transitional period themselves you, you know you cannot um, uh, you know, take for granted the fact that they have uh, a tremendous amount of talent still in that team. And I think they're one of those groups that if you do take them for granted, then, you know, it really does come back to the bite you. So we'll, we'll be in the right place. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've got some work to be done tomorrow and, and to finalise some of our plans and preparations. But, you know, f to your point, we'll be throwing everything at the weekend and I'm not sure there's a game that we've had yet where we haven't. Um, if there's points on the ball to play for, Tim, then I've always felt that it's a game that you have to throw everything into. Ray Fields with the Tennesseans with the next question. Gary, you touched on it a little bit in the last answer, just holistically looking at Atlanta and obviously talking about your own preparations, but in terms of the attack specifically with Atlanta, do you approach or will you approach how you're planning for Atlanta just a bit differently simply due to their personnel with Kubo Toros and, and Jurgen up there instead of obviously PT is gone now and Joseph is out for the season? Does that dynamic change uh, the way you guys are preparing for Saturday? Well, well Torres and, and Jan are, are very different individuals and there's no way of telling at this point um, who'll start the game. I think what we've seen is that you may well see both of them throughout the game because of the opportunities with substitutes. Um, 
Pity not being involved and, and winning the game ultimately against us in Atlanta, um, you'd have to think is a positive for us. He's, a, he's an exceptionally talented guy and, and it's one less exceptionally talented individual they have in their group. But, you know, they've added um, uh, Darm out wide and, uh, you know, Barco seems to have stepped into the void that Pity has left. You know, just watching the game last night, that there's a lot of weight put on, on, on you know, a young man's shoulders there. Now that you know you've you've had um, Joseph and and Pity disappear, and of course, in the not too distant future or, or past, you, you've obviously lost Almiron as well, and he's he's now stepped up a little bit, and he he looks like an individual who the other guys are leaning on quite a bit. Listen, it's whatever way you look at it, um, and they're not an easy side to play against because of their, um, their, their, their philosophy and their mantra of, of possession and creativity. But they do take normally a lot of chances going forward. They commit bodies to attack, which makes them so exciting, of course, but it also makes them vulnerable. And, uh, you know, I don't know what, um, Stephen Glass will do with a group after a midweek game, but I think we know we're in for a tough, um, tough encounter, come what may. But I also believe after uh, a three-game unbeaten streak and only one goal in that period against us, and and certainly opportunities to have taken the victory in a couple of those games, um, you know the the players are in a confident mood. They're refreshed. They they look bright and and upbeat today, which you which I would have expected, and uh, you know they they certainly want to start putting this record straight. And the final question for today will come from Ben Wright uh, with Speedway Soccer. Yeah, Gary. In two previous matches against Atlanta this season, obviously two losses, but I, I imagine you'll feel like you you weren't really outplayed and, and probably a little bit unlucky to concede some of the goals in the way that you did. How important is it for you and, and the team to get a result in this third match against Atlanta? Well, I, I don't think I could have stressed any more uh, how you know important I feel it is, and and I'm sure the players feel the same way. Um, I think if if we look at it purely from a, a competitive standpoint, which is what every game should be, and from a, a, a standpoint of a, um, a, a local derby and a rivalry, yes, of course, you know, it is important. We want to we wanna put our mark on this, um, you know, this rivalry scenario. But um, I don't think anyone's in a desperate state here. I mean, let, let's keep it in perspective. We're at home. We will certainly give it everything we have to win this game. There'll be, I'm sure, no, um, no individual um, on that field that won't absolutely empty the tank for a result for us. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're reliant on quality at the right times. And, uh, you know, making sure that our game plan is, is fulfilled to its, its, um, to its very utmost. Listen, I expect it to be extremely competitive, even though I've said that they've had a tough week. They've got a good group. They've got depth. And uh, I, I'm, I would be very surprised if Stephen doesn't rotate a little bit to get some fresher legs on the field. But my hope is... And uh, there's certainly no guarantees in professional sport. But my hope is that, you know, we turn out a performance that we have done in the last couple at home. Um, we're able to create the opportunities that we have done in, in most of our games. And uh, somebody in the group is able to, to do something that they haven't just yet. And that's, you know, get us on track with multiple goals and it would be even nicer if one of the forwards was to score multiple goals. And that would, that would be quite, quite something for us. And I, I think that would be enough.